up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of the Crown & Stitch Podcast. Here to talk some fitted, some snapbacks, some obscure headwear with the guys. Keith, Dexter, what's good, fellas? How you guys doing? Yo, yo, yo. Got the pod squad back together. Let's get it. Muy bueno. Ready. I'm ready for it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's always a nice little uh, little mental vacation to, to chop it up with you guys about this stuff because... One, it makes me feel less crazy because in my, you know, close circle of friends, there's not too many people buying as many fitteds as I am. But when I talk to you guys, I feel justified in in spending ridiculous amounts of money on, you know, too many hats. So uh, I appreciate you guys supporting me in that way. <laughs> we support your habit. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so uh, where are we at here? This is going to be episode six and... By special request uh, from one Jacques Slade, a.k.a. Cousteau, who requested a little conversation around cleaning hats and, uh, you know, a little maintenance, a little maybe preventative maintenance. So we're going to get into some of that kind of stuff. But first, let's talk about let's talk about what we picked up recently. Who wants to start us off? Start us start off, it? Dexter. Oh, yeah. How about oh, yeah? Me? Go me. ahead, Nick. Go, Nick, go ahead, Nick. All right. All right. All right. Um I, I, I just got one for you. This is going to be familiar, too, because I know Dexter got this, too. But it came in. Hat Heaven. This is the uh, Polo Grounds, New York Giants. That side patch is absolutely amazing. Chef's Kiss. I almost yes. bought that, too. I, I I need to get that one. <laughs> yeah, I need that one it, in the it's, collection. It's so good, man. I, I mean, like, I think, like, this the details on the actual logo, too. Yeah. You know, like it's it's actually kind of like reminiscent of of Dexter's A's logo, right? Like the little like serifs on the end of things, and it's like it's it's weird because you know we've talked about on previous episodes. I'm a huge fan of the old Giants logo, like the older Giants logo. Like I rather have like the no, you know, points yeah. kind of. Yeah, I mean, I love them all, but like if we're getting picky about it. That one is one of those ones where, like, it's pretty aggressive with with the additions to the NY, I guess. But you know, that Polo Grounds badge, I just, I just, you know, I, I get like Willie Mays nostalgia, you know, thinking about like, you know, baseball was just like the focal point of American culture at that moment, right? And I don't hard not to, I can't pass that up, you know. Plus, you can wear a New York hat and it's still a Giants hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very true. It's it's actually funny. So, like, I, I uh, if you, if you guys don't know, I worked for Complex Media. I moved to New York. Uh, I worked like alongside Russ Bankston at Complex doing Complex sneakers. I mean, really, Complex sneakers hadn't started at that point, but like, it kind of evolved into that. Like, I actually signed up for Complex sneakers on my phone because we were like, oh, we should have our own Instagram account, you know. But when I got there, you know, Russ is a big Mets fan. And I was like, I was like, I, I showed up with a with the New York Giants hat, you know, with the orange and the and and black. And I was like, you know, I'm I'm only just I'm wearing this just to be respectful, Russ, because you know, <laughs> this is this is basically the roots that, that your your team exists because you know my team existed here. So um, but yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's interesting when you look into the history of those teams too, you know, like we talked a little bit about it in the beginning of the, of the, you know, start of the podcast, that rivalry, man, that like New York rivalry transitioning out to the West coast. I mean, I don't know if there's anything better than giants Dodgers baseball, which, you know, as we're recording, this is actually happening too. So hashtag beat LA. If you're, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're watching the game, but I don't know. what do you guys pick up recently? And actually the, Giants are down two to one right now. So you kind of you might be jinxing us. They just scored. <laughs> Damn it. Hey, it was two zero earlier, so we're making progress. We're chipping away. But um uh what I picked on up, that polo grants hat, real quick. So I wore that to the game Sunday because it was Warriors playing and the Giants. So I said, okay, I'm gonna put my old school Spreewell jersey on and nice. it's blue. So I'm gonna put the blue New York Polo Grounds hat on. So the first guy sees me, he's like, "Oh man, he's like, you're dope." Dap me up. He's like one of the guys, like you know, scanning me through the thing. And I go inside, and we were sitting there at the bar or something. 
And this guy who had nothing to do, he's just sitting next to us. And he's talking to my buddy. He goes, hey, you got to get your friend a new hat. And I was like, I was like, do you know what this is? And I was like, polo grounds. He was like, oh, oh. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry, bro. I was like, it's all good, it's all good. He had no idea. He had no Do idea, bro. homework and uh, check out Crown and Stitch, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but my guy, go ahead, Keith. Oh, uh, first pickup. Actually, I have it on head right now. This came in yesterday. This is uh, from Fan Treasures, and they did a collaboration with uh, with Pierre that's on that does Views from the Vault. And uh, this is a Boston landmark hat. So this is based off um, an oyster house out in Boston. I don't know oh. if you guys could see the side patch. That's the oh, that's side 1961 All Star Game. It's uh, I like it because it has like the gold accents around the 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 Boston B, and it's a it's like a deep deeper red color. It's not you know that typical bright or fire red or any of those other reds. So I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of like like I said before, like the burgundies, the deeper reds, and uh, Having that little gold accent around the B, um, kind of kind of giving me Niner vibes right now. So yeah. I had to scoop that up. Uh, while I'm on the Boston theme, I picked up uh, oh, this from Toppers. Yes. Another that Boston patch hat, is crazy, dude. This is oh, my, my all-time favorite patch. May uh, let, let's go. Let's say top five. But uh, just like the metallic and the gold hits on the patch, and yet again with that like dark deep red under visor it's more gold uh going heavy niner boston themes tonight <laughs> Seriously. i like it i like it <laughs> all right well i mean it is uh springtime right now so i don't want to get specific dates going on but i picked up a little uh easter little situation here with a little nice. bunny uh a little bunny pin this is the 60th anniversary Baltimore Orioles with the little uh, checkered out guts, you know? You know yeah, those colors are wild. I, like, I don't know what I'll ever be able to wear with this, but um, I'll figure something out, you know? I love that logo, too. That Coke logo's dope. Or something, you know? Hell yeah. Yep. What, what, what are you rocking on, on head? Oh, this is uh, Ox Pack Hat Club. This was the um, Souls of Mischief. Nice. nice. Oakland A's. Classic. The 30th anniversary patch. Nice, Beautiful. nice. I realized that we didn't talk about what we were wearing, so I figured I'd just put you on spot since, <laughs> since Keith talked about it. I, I'm, I don't know which one I'm supposed to be turning here. Let me see. I, I, I'm a, I got the Jackie Robinson new, Robinson. new release. Um Nothing, nothing too crazy, but always, always gotta, always gotta pay respects. So I feel like if there's one, if there's one hat that I have to have every year, it, anything Jackie Robinson associated. So also, we got to mention that uh, Keith this is the first time he's not wearing just a crisp, basic white T-shirt. <laughs> yes, is best TV a, show of all time, Sopranos. Totally Soprano. <laughs> yeah, there's a uncivilized. I, I'd have to go wire above that, but no, it's a pretty damn good show. I can't argue with that because I've never seen The Wire, so withhold oh. judgment, and uh, once I watch it, I'll let you know that <laughs> Sopranos is still better. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not even going to get into that, but oof. both those shows are excellent. Both those shows are... are like there's There's a valid argument for either of those being the best show of all time. All right, so we talked a little bit about this before we started. Cleaning hats. I, uh, you know, let me just start out by saying, I start, uh, like, my my hat game and my hat cleaning career started way back in the day with those stupid plastic things that you just snap in the hat and throw it in the dishwasher. I ruined many hats doing that, thinking that it was going to be a way to clean my hats. Probably ruined oh, a lot of my, my mom's Not dishes, to be honest. Machine? No, dishwasher. Oh, <laughs> Top rack dishwasher. <laughs> yep. I could see that ruining a hat for sure. Well, so, so the washing machine. So I'm talking like the old school plastic snap together thing, right? Like it, 
it's like it's not strong at all. And I don't even know that it would last. Like it would probably just unclip in the washing machine. So like the instructions on the one that I bought was dishwasher. So it's top rack only. So it's, you know, it doesn't get too crazy, but you know, it just, it just didn't hold the shape of the hat. You know, anytime you get a hat wet, it starts to shrink. So then I was like stretching them back to fit all that kind of stuff. But out of that, my kind of go-to default is, and this is old school as it gets, but like just some like Dawn dish soap and a toothbrush and that's it. I got, I mean, I don't get too crazy with it. I I have used some other stuff recently and I'll get into that in a little bit, but that's kind of the, the, the basics of, of hat cleaning, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. But now we got all sorts of other things out there, right? So like there's all sorts of different things that you can do to kind of keep things uh, from, from even getting to the point where you need to be cleaning them. But what are, what are you guys like any, any products that you use cleaners that you use? Keith mentioned uh, the protectant from hat club. I haven't used that, but I definitely use a similar product on a lot of my sneakers. So I probably should use it on my hats. What are you guys thinking about cleaning stuff? I mean, the first rule of thumb for me and the first advice I can give you guys is if you buy enough hats, Dexter had mentioned this too, you could rotate through all the hats and and each individual one is not going to get as dirty, you know? So step one, buy more hats. Uh, Like (laughs) Nick was saying, uh, I bought like the cleaning kit from Hat Club and I'm kind of scared to clean my hats. You know, like I'm always worried if I'm going to get them too wet, like, especially some of them are, are hundred percent wool. You know what I mean? Nowadays it's not quite as much, but you know, you don't want to be getting the wool wet, but um, the cleaner and deodorizer, that's what comes in the pack from a, uh, from hat club. Uh, this is the one I use on all my hats. This is the spray protectant. It's, it's similar to like what you use to, uh, for your sneakers, you know, just spray it on, let it dry. Um, you know, kind of beads up, kind of makes it waterproof and stuff. So if anything crazy, spills on hopefully it'll it'll glide right off and then uh also with the cleaner and deodorizer it comes with a little brush and if possible you know if it's not getting too dirty or nothing no stains are getting set in if you could use the brush and kind of just knock stuff off of it without having to uh get your hat too wet that's that's my really my number one thing because i'm scared to like saturate the hat or even like spray in one spot and scrubbing on one little area um it kind of freaks me out. So I, I try to go light if possible and, uh, you know, don't get too crazy. You don't want to be breaking threads and everything, scrubbing your hat like crazy. So, uh, I try to be careful with them first of all. And, uh, yeah, just a nice little scrub, uh, you know, don't get it too saturated. And if you have the protectant, then, you know, you don't have to worry quite as much because some of the lighter, you know, if it's raining drops of water feed right off and you should be good. For sure. So my old school way of cleaning hats, well, like when I've talked about this too many times on this podcast, when Fit Hats first came out, you could really only get like a team or two. And me and my buddy, Jew, we both had like either a blue or a red Yankee. Or maybe he had a blue. I had a red. I don't know. But we're wearing these like every day. And as Keith said, buy more hats. But we're kids. The hat probably cost 25 bucks back then. Like we're not going to get any more. It's it. Right. We don't have a job. So this one's like seventh, eighth grade or something like that. So they're getting filthy. And um, on our way home, we used to walk right past this dry cleaner. So I go in there one day. I say, hey, you guys have a way of cleaning this hat. We're not like messing it up. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, it's like five bucks. We're like, all right, cool. So we drop our hats off. And we come back like a few days later. And they were like clean. But they were like shrunken and like wrinkled up here. And we were like, oh, man, like, that's I don't know what they did, but that's not they didn't maintain the integrity of the hat. Right. So that was it for me, giving my hat to another random dry cleaning situation. So when I first really got back into like buying online hats, they weren't selling out like crazy like they are now. So I wasn't tripping off a hat getting a little dirty. It's like, all right, fine. I'll buy another one. Cool, whatever. But now 
since, you know, the hats have gone up in price and these things are like, you know, collector's items now, damn near. Just like Keith said, I went to this place on Hate Street. It was a uh, hat store called Bespoke. So 100% unicorn hair. Wow. <laughs> Made That's in Israel. No shit. joke. No damn joke. Now, it's just a really soft, like super soft brush. It likes to remind me of stuff my dad used to like buff and clean his like dress shoes with and stuff like but um, just super soft brush, you know, every once in a while, if you see a little something on here, you just just knock it off. Hat's perfectly fine. You're not messing the threading up or anything, you know. But I do have some hats that are like kind of beat up and the sweat bound on the inside is a little, it's getting a little icky, you know. So I think I might uh might be uh copping something specific to clean the hats with. Or maybe I'll just try the Dove soap. I don't know. Or Don soap. <laughs> You know, it's funny you mentioned that, too, because I had saw like a couple of weeks back on Instagram. There's a, uh, a hat company called House of Fitted, and they have like disposable sweatbands. They have like one side is sticky. You uh, stick it up into the sweatband of your hat right there and it's white. But basically, you're not getting the actual sweatband of your hat dirty. You can, you know, wear it. I don't know how many wears it lasts for, but I actually just purchased some uh, right before the podcast. But, you know, stick them in. Don't have to worry about the sweatband getting too dirty and, you know rip it off, throw another one in. I think they, I think they said it coming up like packs of 20. So, I mean, it was fairly inexpensive. It was 20 bucks. So basically a dollar per disposable sweatband. So I'm gonna give those a shot and see that, see if that helps. Cause you know, you ever get to do anything crazy or some unexpected, uh, strenuous activity and you sweat a little bit in your hat. You don't want to be, uh, don't want to be burning through the sweatbands. Our, our resident Guinea pig. Thank you, sir. Testing you got it. Uh, I will report back soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that that sounds like uh, like a a great idea. If it, you know, I mean, we're not there yet, but I could see that being, you know, like a Nike, uh, like a, a removable or you know some sort of you know innovative way to to like change out that sweatband. Seems like something like a company like Nike would do if they were making a bunch of a bunch of hats. Huh? You know, I mean, I know they make hats, but they're not really focused on it. But <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it does kind of make me wonder, like, how, you know, how it would change the fit of the hat, adding stuff in there. Because, you know, I, I definitely, you know. I definitely sweat a lot, especially like if I'm playing, you know, running with the dog or playing baseball, you know, softball, any of those things. And I used to throw a bandana around the top of my head underneath my hat as a, as a kid, as a teenager. But as I got older and my head grew, I just don't do that anymore. But it, like, that's the one fear that I would have, you know, it's kind of like, it reminds me of a, uh, like the force field, sneaker things right like i mean i don't care enough about not having creases in my shoes but like to me putting anything in there that that makes it fit more snug kind of kills the point because you know you're probably buying a a shoe or a hat in your size and if it if it changes that that's definitely gonna be a a no-go for me (laughs) but i'm i'm definitely curious how 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 it turns out i mean for 20 bucks, I think it's, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. I would definitely give it a shot, too. Yeah. I mean, like, I probably won't put it on any of my hats that are that fit a little snugger. You know, I'll probably grab one of the ones I bought a size up just because that was all that was left and I couldn't get my size. So I'll throw it in one of those first and test it out. The problem for you is, too, is, I mean, you don't have no room to size up, Nick. So it's, I don't know. Like, you know. It's not true. They're selling eight, <laughs> yeah. eight and a half now. <laughs> That's true. I'm, I'm I'm really hoping it doesn't make it fit too much different, though. Hopefully, it's at least pretty thin. You know, I, I I can imagine they probably make something thin enough to where it's not going to severely alter the sizing. But we will find out. Yeah, I mean, to to Dexter's point about like the the dry cleaning experience. So that's essentially like the way that that old hat rack thing that was supposed to help. It was supposed to help it keep shape, but it just didn't. Right? It wasn't really. F- fit to you know it was it was just a generic like you know size so it didn't fit every hat perfectly and it didn't have enough structure it wasn't strong enough anyway but one of the things that i do 
uh, you know, kind of mentioned like stretching the hats back out. If you get like a, in terms of like, like helping with the like deodorizer type thing. Cause you mentioned like that spray that you have is kind of like scented or whatever. Um, I think Keith, like the hat club stuff, right. It has like a, it doesn't have too much of a smell, but it, it, it smells vaguely of a cleaner, you know, it's yeah. not like, it doesn't smell like water, but it's not like any super strong, like fragrance spray either. Yeah. So like I, I use like a, uh, it's it, the hat stretcher. I, I wish I had it with me, but like, it's like two sides and it's got a twist in the middle. Right. And it's like just big old chunks of cedar. And like, it just soaks up a lot of that like odor from anything. Right. Like, but it, it definitely, it, when you first get that, and start to store your hats with it. Cause like I only have one of them. I might, I might have two. I, I think. Yeah. But like, I only store like one hat at a time where I'm stretching it. Right. Cause like, I just have some hats that, that, that I've sweated in and they're smaller or tried to wash them back in the day and they're smaller. And like, so I, I kind of been going through and like restretching the hats to, to get to a point that, that hopefully they, they all fit even though some of them are so like just old school, I'm, I'm just not going to wear them. It's more just like a nostalgia thing to keep them. But um, that's another way for me to like, I think kind of at least like after the wear and tear has already been in is one of the things that I think is like a, a, a good way to just like default, like throw something in like that, that soaks up some of that. And I know that like the other thing that I'd seen, I don't know if people do this with hats, but like a lot of people use coffee beans, like old coffee beans. Like you can get like, you know, it, stuff that you didn't roast or, or that you didn't brew or whatever, or, um, you know, some of the, some of the coffee shops that will, will like give away old stuff. And that's another, like just strictly odor type of thing. You can, you can, you know, set them underneath a hat that odor is going to soak into the beans and it's going to kind of like take some of that away. It's not like a, a you know, a hundred percent successful every time, but it, as far as like, you know, I'm thinking of like, uh, even when I'm exercising and doing stuff, like I'm usually wearing a hat. So for me, all those different variations are, are kind of ways to, to, you know, help that in terms of, I was mentioning before we started recording the other, the other cleaner that, I've used on, on hats. Well, I guess two things, one agreed on the brushes, like a soft brush, you know, especially if you're, if you're talking fitteds and, and wool hats, soft brushes, no brainer. You have to have that. I would say like, you know, it's the first thing you buy as an accessory. I still, I know a lot of people will not like this, but I still love, uh, the Mr. Clean magic erasers, man. Like oh, yeah. those things will work miracles. I know that the way that it does it is not the best for the actual material, but it is the easiest, quickest way to get like actual spots off of anything that you have, whether that's a hat, especially the bill. Like you can, you know, like for me, like I'll, especially like if I'm working on the car or something, I'll, I'll, you know, touch something and get, you know, fingerprints or something underneath magic eraser is a really good way to, to like get that out depending on how deep it is, obviously. But, um, the other, the other cleaner that I actually use is uh, Sneaker Lab, which is like a, a bacteria-based cleaner. So it's a little bit different than your standard cleaners in a sense that like it, it, it – the best way to put it is like it, it has to penetrate. So like it has to like soak in and, and get in to release all the dirt and stuff um, in a way that like – you know, the typical shoe cleaner, hat cleaner type of stuff just doesn't really, it's not the same. Right. Um, but I also, you know, I, I am very cautious, especially with wool hats because, you know, once, once they lose that size, it's tough to keep them anywhere close to the right size. And if you get, if you get anything too wet, you know, it just becomes problematic. It starts losing its shape and, that's that's kind of just a no go for for us, my opinion. I had a question, Nick. Um, when you mentioned the hat stretcher, I've seen a lot of people use steamers while they're stretching it. You know, they'll they'll put the hat stretcher in, start you know twisting it to expand it, and then they'll they'll take like a handheld steamer and they'll they'll steam the hat while they're stretching it. Have you tried that at all? Yeah. So so I've actually 
I haven't, I've used a steamer for sure in that sense. Um, that's a, that's a, like a, a great way to like loosen the, loosen it up a little bit because like depending on the hat, right. You might want, like I have some older hats that are, you know, maybe a five eights or, or, you know, three quarters or something where like, I don't know what I was thinking. I just needed the hat and then I stretched it out. But as soon as I start to wear that and it's not being stretched out, it, it goes back down. But you want it to be a little bit wet to like a little moist to like kind of expand. Right. Um, but I will say too, like in a, in a similar sense, sometimes when you need to get like st stains out, like this doesn't really work on the, on the sweatbands for me because it's just really hard to get in there and get that out. Like you almost have to have it be soaked in there to get any of those stains out. But if you have like little marks on the, on the, like, let's say you, you know, I don't know, brush up against something and it leaves a mark on your hat. A lot of times you can use a steamer to actually like in combination with one of those soft brushes to kind of like get it, you know, like if it's, if it's beyond like just brushing off with a brush and you want to get it, like you want, you want some moisture to it to get the soap in to penetrate, right? Whatever cleaner you're using. But you know, like we're talking about, we don't want them, to, you know, you don't want to just like throw it in the washing machine and have it completely soaked because that's where it's going to lose its shape and structure and everything you love about it, basically. So like for me, that the steamer thing has been an interesting thing to try with like just random little things. Like I, I uh, a, an example of this is like this room that I'm in, I painted white, right? When we moved in, it was like this awful, like kind of off yellowish color and off khaki, whatever. And we're like, ah, let's just paint the rooms, right? Of course, like I'm wearing a hat, this one, like Giants hat, California flag within the within the you know SF logo or whatever. But I got you know paint specks on it, right? Like I'm using like the spray gun and stuff, and inevitably you get a little stuff on there. I I was trying a bunch of different things. I, I actually haven't gotten some of the parts out, but using the steamer with um. Uh, it's basically like the, the nail polish remover, right? It, it actually works pretty well. I thought it was going to discolor the hat. And obviously I would say test this in a, you know, before you go dumping it on a hat. But for me, it actually works fine. It didn't, it didn't seem to damage the wool. The hat still is kind of messed up because there's bigger paint drips or whatever on it. And, you know, I'm just not, I'm not trying to like pretend like I'm a graffiti artist or something. So no point in, in now you got a paint hat though. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you, if you need some paint, yo, I got a hat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, those, those are kind of like the basics for, for hat cleaning and maintenance for me. I mean, the other thing, like, I think, it, you know, if you, if you really want to uh, like expand on that, like, you know, Jacques, Jacques just released like a, 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 a sneaker wipe that smells like, dryer lint or <laughs> dryer lint uh this smells like uh dryer sheets right like fabric softener and like you know with sneakers i used to stuff my shoes with fabric softener all the time to try to get that smell out as a kid i've done that with hats too where I like you know you could just take a hat like flip the the inner you know sweatband at down a little bit drop the whole liner in and leave it in right around the front and it'll definitely help it doesn't clean that but it definitely helps with the odor if if it's something you're like, you know, hitting the gym in, working out in, you know, doing whatever in. So um, but yeah. I don't I don't know. You guys got anything else before we get into this uh little little kicks and fits section? Nah, I, I can think of it. Yeah. All right, who who wants to start the kicks and fits segment? Take this one I started backwards. the first one, so one of you guys got to do it. All right, I'll start. All right. What am I <laughs> doing here? All right. So this is also a new pickup. Uh-oh. Hats are falling everywhere. Seattle Pilots. I know I did another Seattle Pilots, but this is... I think this is what they, their primary colors were. That's nice. Yellow, blue, and red. And take it with the Prince Akeems, you know? Nice. <laughs> yes. Coming to that America. That's great, man. That's oh, a yeah. perfect match right yep, there. That's good. 
I like the stitching on that hat too. That the stitching looks really clean on that one. Dude, these blazers, look at the stitching on this thing. Yeah, those are like wild. Oh, that swoosh is thick, dog. <laughs> Damn. Those are dope. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's one of my favorite pairs, man. I wish I had that one. All right. I guess I'll go next. Uh, this is from my fittings. This was a YMCA hook. Basically, I think it's like one off, off one of the Village People album covers. It has like a <laughs> off brown like under visor. And then I like how it has that royal blue surrounded the Yankees logo. But yeah, uh, that blue is like, it's making yeah. my eyes. Uh, yeah, it's I super saw hidden. I saw Damn. Nice. And then uh, with the Hyper Royals. And the thing I like about wearing these two together is like there's little hits of that royal blue like on the tongue tag and the stitching actually like all over the shoe is that same like royal blue color that's surrounding the Yankees logo. So it's like, I didn't know the hat looked like that before I bought it. Like I couldn't see all like the little, you know, royal blue stitching on it. But once, uh, once I got it in and it kind of sparked my, my thought, like, Hey, I could wear those with the hyper Royals. And it ended up being a, being a pretty nice match there. Yeah, man, that's a good one. I mean, I, I can't condone wearing a Yankees hat, but <laughs> you know that's that's a pretty solid look. <laughs> New York Giants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So so I I uh, let's see. I'm gonna go with a with a, a shoe that's a little bit more obscure. But first off, Giants. You saw this on a previous episode. Or sorry, King Sacramento King. You saw this on a previous episode. Just the the new logo, Sacramento Proud. But this. Oh. Is the uh Hez Kicks Hez Kicks what is it the uh Saucony Grid 9000 that was done? Uh, they did like a uh a, a series with a bunch of YouTubers, sneaker YouTubers. So, shout out to Hez Kicks, he, he's got he's a DJ, so he's got the little I don't know if you can see this, I don't know if you can see this little little uh oh, oh yeah, there we yeah. go, like some vinyl going on, right? Yeah, oh, like yep. the little. The little the thing that they it spins a little, little pin, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. these are pretty, pretty uh, great materials. Got a uh, got has kicks there on the other side. Yeah, that's nice. You know, and I could have picked many giant or many Sac- Sacramento Kings has to go with that, but I figured this one was the uh, this is the one I've been I've been looking forward to wearing. So that might actually be on my feet and on my head within the next uh, twenty four hours. So. Do it. When you pulled that out, I was I was like, okay, how do y'all pronounce? Because I always said Sacconi, but you said Sacconi. Is there a proper pronunciation? So it's it, yeah, it's sock a knee. They they actually did like an old ad that that was like the quotes of that kind of thing. Okay, I got to get it locked in. Until I saw that, I did the same thing. So <laughs> that's why I just never say it because I'm scared to mess it up. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sockety, uh, Sockety, Sockety, Scratchy, yeah. Scratchy, Sockety. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so are we, are we pulling out some obscure? I don't have anything obscure, but you should you should close it out with something obscure for the for the for the viewers. Let's see it. All right. I got a couple. I think I'm going I'm to save you for later on, buddy. So back in the day, I don't know what the original company or if there was an original company, but in the 80s, there was this thing where corduroy was like all the rage, right? But they used to have these specific hats with the fish on it, right? Tell me, remember this? Nice. Name? You remember these, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I got this at like, uh, um, uh, I don't know, a... Uh, 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 What's the Urban Outfitters or something like that? And yeah. It's just a gray hat. It's got more fish on the inside, snap back, and it's corduroy, which I love corduroy. It's got the little fish on there. Bada boom, that's it. Easy peasy. And you got the stringer going around the between the brim and the crown right there. That's right. See, it's some real damn English shit right here. Yep. <laughs> just throwing it all the way Al back. Bundy probably had a couple of these. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> All right, well, that wraps up another episode of the Crown and Stitch podcast.
podcast, YouTube show, wherever you're watching this, listening, uh, guys, let's let them know how they can find us outside of the show. You can find me at Keith the Sneak with two K's on IG. You could also just follow the Crown Stitch uh, IG page. That's a, uh, I think that's the best way. Well, you can also find me Crown and Stitch, smooth as eggs, right there, on everything. Um, also, the Industry Special Podcast, which I've been neglecting because of this podcast, but I will be back. I got some plans. I got something set up. So, cheers. Nice, nice. You can follow at Nick Ingvall to find me. More importantly, like they said, at Crown and Stitch on all the platforms. Thanks for rocking with us. Let us know what you're rocking, what fit is you're rocking, what, what's your latest pickup on any of the social channels, and we'll, uh, we'll holler back at you, and we'll have some conversation around these things. Catch you next time. Peace. Peace.